if love is blonde, Nancy, will you keep Artis as your most cherished person? Say, I do. I do. It is now time to decide if love is blonde. If so, say, I do. Love is Blind Season 3 has proven to be quite the season. In fact, it's probably the most interesting one that I've seen. And I think that what I'm going to do is break down the psychology of the guys on the show. I think that a lot of them are doomed. Now, I've chosen to fix on a couple of them and I'm going to be doing a series of videos. Hopefully you watch them. Uh, but today's video is on Bartis and Nancy and also featuring my favorite dude in the whole show. I wish he was there more. Andrew. Andrew the monotone sociopath. Meow. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then I hope that you continue to watch this video because Love is Blind has become my new trash TV favorite and I don't know why, but I understand the appeal. Now, for any of you who don't know, Love is Blind is a show in which contestants go into pods and they don't actually see the other person. They then choose someone to fall in love with, propose to them, and in four weeks marry them. Whether the marriage lasts or not is really up to the couples in real life. So far, nobody has succeeded in this shit. Everyone who seems to have succeeded later down the line when you look at them, they've broken up or gotten a divorce. If you look at their Instagram, you'll find this whole post being like, we amicably split, we're still best friends, but I hate her. It's more like that. So unfortunately, Love is Blind has proven to be more of a blinding love sort of thing. It hasn't worked and the hosts Vanessa and Nick Lachey are famous for making shows that are shit and I'm not talking about just love is blind but alas a journey has begun and we are now going to go on it. So I hope you join me. I hope you like what is to come. If you do want to subscribe then please by the end of the video do so if you like what you see and also join me at 16leo underscore on my Instagram if you want to message me for more ideas on videos. The series is going to be fun. But first a moment from today's sponsor Raycon. Did you hear that? It sounds like the holidays are just around the corner. Now I'm not one for the early decorating hype, but what I do like is getting in early before the holidays to do that Christmas shopping. Luckily Raycon has got you. They made it easy with the holiday gift guides for everyone in your life from your mom and dad to your secret Santa co-worker. Or knock that shopping list out all at once and get 30% off by shopping Raycon's holiday bundles like their all-star bundle which includes one pair of everyday earbuds and one pair of fitness earbuds. The wireless earbuds, headphones and speakers offer premium sound, useful features and almost custom comfortable fit and up to 54 hours of battery life. You can find Raycon in stores now like Kohl's or Walmart. But here's a secret. You're always going to get the best deal when you use my special link. Buyraycon.com slash 16leo. Click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash 16leo and use code EARLYBF to get 20% off site-wide or save even bigger and get 30% off Raycon's exclusive holiday bundles. There will also be different deals coming throughout the season and I'll try to keep the description box updated with the latest offers. But just so you know, you can always go to buyraycon.com slash 16leo to get the best deals available on Raycon. What you need to know is that when I say the psychology of guys, I'm talking about a lot of the men in these show because I can put myself in the position of them. I can understand the way that they're thinking and how some of their thoughts don't add up to their actions. Now, when we think about Bartis, the man, he is someone who talks a lot of shit. He talks a lot of game. He is someone who has gone into the pods and he said, I don't care about looks whatsoever. Love is blind. I am blind as well. I love you for your personality. The problem is he can't back it up because he completely is addicted to looks. And that is the problem in today's episode. So without further ado, let's start watching. Welcome to Blind. Hey, it's Nick the Dick Lachey. He's back. I feel like I've run into him too many times. First on Love is Blind, then the ultimatum, then back on this. Ugh. I'm Shay. Guys, I'm Shay. Over the next 10 days, you're going to date a lot of single people. If you find someone you want to spend the rest of your life with, you'll propose. Ooh. And if they accept... Oh, that's Andrew. He's a sociopath. I wish that he was on the show for longer. I wish he was in more episodes. I hate that they cut him out. You'll see. I feel very good about saying... Today's episode focuses on the relationship between Nancy and Bartis. Nancy is a 31-year-old speech pathologist, and she is a bubbly person. She's got quirks. She's got a very weird laugh. I'm just gonna say it. But I'll tell you what. I think she's a pretty good person. Leave this experiment with my best friend. And it's scary, but I think that I've always all right, so Nancy is, you know, just the thought of dating is pretty tough. She's crying. Just at the thought of dating in this day and age is supremely hard to find someone who you really love. Nancy is looking on a show called Love is Blind, so clearly she's run out of options because that is that is literally the, the last thing you want to do is go into a pod and meet someone. 
that seems like something in Dragon Ball Z. And, and you'd never take love advice from that show. So she meets a guy called Bartice, who's 25 and an accountant. Who's over there? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. There's that freaking laugh. Yeah, there it is. Freaking laugh. Even Bartice, at this point, he was like, ah, there's that freaking laugh. Oh, she keeps talking like that. I hate it. Nancy's got some quirks. So this is the first time uh, that we see them meet. I think they initially have a few conversations and they start hitting it off in the pods. Bartice also uh, likes another girl called Raven. Now, I won't show too much of Raven in this series because it doesn't matter as much, but Raven is a fitness or yoga instructor and she's someone who is quite physically attractive, conventionally speaking, and Bartice, without even seeing her, knows this because she alludes to the fact that she gets a lot of male attention and he imagines her to be like a baddie, if you will. This show's called Love is Blind, by the way. It's about not really thinking about what the person looks like. So Bartice is trying to not think about physical stuff, but he's Bartice. You're 25? I'm 25. Five. Oh shit. You know how old I am? Yeah, you told me 31, right? I like how she grabbed her boob when she said that. The problem is Nancy uh, initially does not want someone who's younger because she doesn't want to play games. She doesn't want to play games so much she literally grabbed her titty. Do you know how old I am? You know how fucking old I am? You like this? You like the saggy shit? I'm sorry. Uh, can we just pause for a second? There is a stain on the couch. There is a stain where uh, Nancy was sitting. Nobody mentioned the stain. Did she pee on the couch? What is, but why is there a stain on the couch? Oh my God. Can someone explain that, please? My goodness. That is unsavory. That doesn't scare you? That scares me. I envision my life with Bartise. I know that he's six years younger than me, but there's just something so safe. Bartise and Nancy develop an emotional connection. I tried looking for exactly what it is they hit it off with in the pods. I don't really know. I guess they both have high energy. They're both infectious people. Bartise is a, quite a people person. He's very loud and accommodating and very extroverted. And Nancy is sort of the same in that she matches his energy. And that has been the connection point between those two. However, Bartise is also attracted to Raven and she's attracted to him back. And they have a little dialogue uh, out of the pods. The girls are talking and Raven does not seem to like Nancy. So funny. <laughs> Because we literally joke all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way she laughs. <laughs> she laughs like a uh, anime character. <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> I just, I didn't know people actually laugh like that. That you would have like the same type? Or, um, I don't want to be mean, but she comes across as very... <laughs> <laughs> That's how she comes across. She's very... No, 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 no. That's how she is. Nancy is like that person like you see in Walmart from high school and you're like... I'm not truly getting into her in the season. <laughs> I think that she's uh, emotionally closed off as a person and Bartice and Raven sort of go their own ways upon realizing that Raven isn't really someone who can provide him with that level of emotional support that he might require. Her weakness, she says, is muscles and his weakness is a fat ass. So, you know, they should be made for each other on paper. But Raven is not really that character and you can see it in the way that she talks about Nancy in this clip. You know, like, hey, but also like, if I hear someone say Bartise, my ears perk up and I'm like, no, let Nancy walk away, honey. Anyone who talks to themselves in third person always freaks me out. Whenever she says Nancy and I realize she's talking about herself, it's just like if I had a conscience and I talked to myself and it was like, Leo, don't touch that. Then it would be cool. But if I told people like, hey, Leo's going to have a muffin today. And someone's like, oh, who's that? And I say me. Then rightfully so, they're going to be like, oh, okay, sir, we're closed. <laughs> Okay. That's the one. Nancy is quite a quirky woman. She's she's very quirky. If homegirl shoots her shot with Bartiz, then I'm gonna let Bartiz figure that out. It wouldn't be a good series without a love triangle. And this is an early on love triangle because Bartiz and Nancy are having a good time. Bartiz might like Raven a little bit, but he's not committing to her. The only thing better than that is having a amazing, sociopathic, beautiful Asian man in the mix. And his name is Andrew. And he is a monotone god. 
period of three or four days where there was no hot water, so I didn't shower at all. And by the fourth day, I was, they brought me like a bucket with hot water, and then I showered with the bucket. I shower with buckets. I'm a bucket shower. I went to Kenya to help the kids of Kenya. I gave them shields and told them to fight for themselves. I said Wakanda forever. They called me a racist, and then I left. I do tend to enjoy some of the finer things in life, whether that be luxury travel, nice clothing, food, alcohol, what have you. But my values are shifting. I now don't like finer things in life. I like ugly things, and that's why I'm on the show Love is Blind. Because I used to actually like finer things, but now I like no finer things. I don't even like things. I don't even like people. I'm a people person. In fact, I have friends. Andrew is just not. He reminds me of an alien trying to replicate a human being. Like, <laughs> the stuff he says, it just it comes out of left field. This man is the reason I think Love is Blind season 3 went viral. There's a clip later on that you'll probably see and recognize. Uh, it's about spending my time and having the experience that I want to have before I die. I have traveled the world uh, I went to South Africa. What is that? What is that sentence? I have traveled the world. I went to South Africa. Is that the world? What? <laughs> Why'd you single out that country? <laughs> <laughs> I've been everywhere. South Africa. You name it, I've been there. Uh, another country? Yeah, South Africa. How about Germany? Yeah, no, I've been to South Africa. All right, cool, bro. I've been to wildlife conservations. I've conserved wildlife in South Africa. Okay, you keep bringing it up. I don't... Do you like the place? What? That's, that's where I discovered wildlife photography. 20 days spent in the bush getting up into the sunrises dealing with the mosquitoes that's just that's just south africa i don't think that's like <laughs> that's just a normal day in south africa anybody from the country will tell you that hiding from the sun under a maasai blanket and nothing different you know waiting with the lions yeah pretty much just a normal day in south africa enduring the scent of decaying carcasses you couldn't have explained the country better if you tried you literally just did a normal day in the life of any south african i have been face to face with leopards and lions that are tearing apart their meal. Just, just to a T. Normally exactly what happens. But Andrew, yeah, his experience in South Africa really changed his life. As soon as I went to South Africa, I realized that I, uh, you know, that I really, I was, uh, I saw the lions and the leopards and I said to myself, I don't want the finer things in life. I want to live like these African children. <laughs> so... <laughs> So I'm now in a hut and I don't give a fuck. I don't care about looks anymore. I care about books. I'm Andrew. I can recognize your voice. You do have that radio station beat 105.6. <laughs> We're here with the love jams. Mm. <laughs> do you like kissing, Nancy? <laughs> so Andrew is like coming in the mix and he's actually uh, gaining the interest off Nancy. Nancy's pretty interested in him in terms of financially, maybe even philosophically. He's older than Bartice and he's more mature mature in certain aspects. He's also a sociopath because he asks questions like, Nancy, do you like kissing? I just never heard a 29 year old ask someone if he like, like kissing. Like, I don't think, I think past a certain age, if you ask that question, it becomes creepy. When you're like 15, it's like cute. Do you like kissing? Cute. 35. Hey, you, you wanna, you want, do you like kissing? It's more like, dude, don't ask that. I do like kissing. It's definitely like whether you're kissing my lip, my back, my shoulder, my forehead. There's something that like literally wires endorphins that release in my body when I'm kissed. The best sex that I've ever had. Yes, let me start telling you about sex that I've had. This should be good for you, especially if you want to date me. You like kissing? Well, I like kissed that girl in the butt cheeks. Yeah, I kiss every area of her. <laughs> I kissed her in places you would never want to be kissed you sort of sync up with the other person and i could feel the pleasure that you're feeling as i bring you pleasure and vice versa i've only been sexually open like this for like a couple years now so then andrew decides to do the sociopathic thing and start breaking down his sex life but not like in a in a charming way he starts doing it in a logical way which just it almost hurts to listen to i've had transcendental sex i actually find pleasure in giving the other person pleasure which gets me pleasure like bro look not to not to not to get all sensual on you but I, I'm not a Virgil myself. I find that it's pretty good to see your partner being pleased because it makes you, you know, tones you on too. So I don't think you have to be transcendental. I think it's just a nice thing to actually want your partner to also get theirs while you get yours. And, uh, you know, if you're a giver, it's pretty good. Just don't be a taker, you know, for everyone listening. If you're going to do it with someone, two people are involved. It's good to give, huh? It's better to give than to receive. Been this dude who's just oozing sex my entire life. So my, the girl I haven't been oozing sex my entire life. It's only happened two years ago that I started oozing sex. Girl that I dated in Bali, 41 year old lady. She had a lot, teach me a lot of that was around sex. That was my first experience doing orgasmic pleasure. Yeah. And uh, what was interesting for me is that there's also this sexual kung fu, as they call it, for men. I just karate chop her boobs. 
and it's sexual kung fu for men. I, you know, I watched a Bruce Lee movie. I watched Enter the Dragon, and then I said to myself, if I can roundhouse kick this bitch, she will orgasm like no other man. I mean woman. Oops. I dated a 41 girl. <laughs> that's, that's a flex and a half. I dated a 41-year-old girl in Bali. Yeah, what about the, like, 20-year-olds? Yeah, I just dated one who was double that, plus one. It's like dating two 20-year-olds and a one-year-old. Don't say that, Andrew. No, no, you know, that's not what I meant. And it involves the ultimate goal of that is to uh, have an orgasm without ejaculating. And there's a set of practices, and I've, and I've worked on this over time. And I beat my meat, but I don't, you know, release that sauce, if you know what I mean. I, I think it's even better to not release that sauce. I'm, I'm a chef, and my secret recipe stays within my penis. Oops, that's, you know, the analogy still works. Andrew is getting way too comfortable talking about this, you know. I just, I don't know if this is necessarily hitting on her. A flex or a therapy session. It could be all three. Uh at this point, I'm able to have uh, sort of mini orgasms uh, without ejaculating during sex. Which Some people make mini muffins. I have mini orgasms. Uh, oops, had one right now. My bad. Uh -huh. Oops, I did it again. That's a Britney Spears song, but also something that I do from time to time. I'm Andrew and I have mini orgasms. Which is the greatest because once you open your mind to the idea of then you can open your balls to the idea of coming. Uh, sexual pleasure becoming this holistic thing and eroticism starting outside of the bedroom. It's like an avenue for growth and also like a source of intense pleasure. Yeah. I'm hoping I can share that with someone. <laughs> I'd like to share my mini orgasms with someone. I'd also like to share my mini muffins because I'm a baker. But I'll tell you what, I, that woman in Bali, she really taught me something. She's <laughs> She died now of old age, but she was 41 when I met her. Wow, what a woman. Yeah, I think you need a, a teacher or someone to sort of open your eyes to awaken you to this. Yeah. Hello. Meow. And meow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. See, see, do you see what I mean? This is how Andrew talks to people. When they meet each other for the next time, he says meow, not hello. And I don't think they've ever done that. That's not been a staple of the series. He, nobody's said anything. They don't have an inside joke. He just decided meow. And then she was like, yeah, meow, okay. What? Like, just because you went to Africa and you took a picture of a lion, it does not make you susceptible to say things like roar. What? Also, I'm sorry, man. What is that? What is that outfit? Besides the fact nobody can see you, you're still like, you know, it's still, a, it's still a wardrobe malfunction at this point. Because if you ever wear a tie and short sleeves, I just, I just don't. I just don't. Do you feel that being that you've had experience of traveling in general, that coming to a life that is, let's just say, quote unquote, typical, right? Like you get married, you have a job, you have kids. Does it worry you or do you- Look at him. He looks like a robot that hasn't been turned on. Like the way he's looking down, like, Processing emotions while she talks. I think maybe I should talk about cats again. Meow. Maybe orgasms. He's just looking down. Like, he doesn't look like a human half the time. Now he's looking up. Like, he doesn't have a function. It's like someone was trying to control him and then pressed the up button and he went like, No, he's too high. He's too high. Just put him down. No, it's too low. It's too low now. Just up. Just a little lower. Up. Yeah, that'll do. Boring for you? Of course, it's a fear, right? Um, I think that's the fear that drove me to start traveling in the first 2019. I, I flew to Paris. The expense account was real flush. So I was renting like nice sports cars every week. I flew, I flew to, Paris to Paris in 2019, 2019 on like my, my credit, credit card, card of my business. Card. business. It's, just it's just something I do. I, I have many orgasms without, without coming. <laughs> I'm Andrew. I have my life put together. I take pictures of wild animals. I was stacking up a bunch of cash and then I was like, fuck it. Stack up cash, stack up ass, if you know what I mean. I met a girl in Bali. Everyone was 21. She was double their age. I said, whose mom are you? She said, I'll be your mommy for the night. And I married her. I banged her. She's dead now. Of old age, of course. I didn't kill her. Life did. Let's go. Three months plus in South Africa and like a month in Namibia. This keeps bringing up um, South Africa. And then three months in Bali. Uh, month and you travel all over the world and you name two countries in Africa and Bali. I just, I love how he always says, I travel the world and follows it with South Africa. Like that, that's his world. I thought I loved my country. Turns out Andrew loves my country more than me. I can't believe that the person who loves, who's more patriotic about South Africa isn't me. It's a 29 year old man from America. Alain de Botton has a, has a, he writes on marriage, I don't know, in love. Who? L.A. Baton. Call me uncultured swine, but I don't know what he's talking about. He's he's holding the cup like he's about to give the most philosophical speech of all time. He's a philosophical douchebag. I, I love this guy. He's so funny without trying to be funny. Ugh. He says that compatibility is a desired outcome of love and marriage, not its precondition. 
He says the two people are ready to get married when they realize that they're fundamentally incompatible for each other. Wow, that is very pessimistic. Very pessimistic. But it could be true. And it could be good psychology. To say it on a show like Love is Blind, to go on a show like Love is Blind and have that philosophical outlook on things is just amazing. That's amazing. That's like not believing in God and then going to church every Sunday. I just... Wow. Funny because it, the idea is that every human, every human will get on your nerve. And so the person you marry, the person you love uh, should be the one that you can... Uh, negotiates uh, these differences in compatibility with, uh, with... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Andrew out here is just using those thesauruses to get as many words as possible into his end thesis. Let me simplify what he's saying because it's pretty simple. I mean, I've said it before. The person that you love is not going to be a perfect person because no person is perfect. The person that you love will be imperfectly perfect, which means they will come with flaws. The thing is, the person you love is going to come with flaws that not only you accept, but you embrace and cherish because you love that person so much that despite everything that you might not like, despite every preconceived notion that you had, you're still willing, and not only willing, able to weather those storms with them. Because if you really love someone, there is no issue that is too big. The love of someone truly should outweigh that. And if it doesn't, then, you know, you need to ask yourself, is it worth it? But that's what he's trying to say. He could have said it in a much more charming way, but this dude chose the philosophical route. He's now confused Nancy to the point she's not talked in a while, and I get scared when Nancy doesn't say her own name. Grace and kindness. Oh, and then he drinks like a baller. Look, what even? He drink, he's holding up gang signs while drinking from a gold cup. Could you be more douchey? <laughs> I just, I just like, like to say that nobody's, nobody's compatible, compatible and you just have to find, find someone, someone who's not as annoying as the, the other person. person. Like, like if, if I don't, I don't find you annoying, I probably love you. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's some good shit. And with Andrew, it's hard for me to envision what our life would be like because he is so fluid in his life of just, oh, it's not a big deal. I just, I don't know how they even get along. Like Andrew is like this crazy philosophical sociopath who is pretty dominating in that. And Nancy has not gotten to say anything that she wants. <laughs> so I don't really know how that's even going to work. I'm not sure why she's, I guess, I guess... Andrew's a pretty appealing person in general. I don't know why he didn't get more matches, because I definitely want to hear more about this man's interesting life to South Africa and across the globe. Have you guys started working on your actual spiel for the proposal? You know what's fucked up? Yesterday at this time, I was working on it for a different girl. Falling in love with Nancy, and there's, there's nothing I can do to help the way I'm feeling. We had a what? What do you mean? <laughs> That's what's going through his head. You fall in love with Nancy. I wanted to fall in love with Nancy. A little two and a half hour date, and I was feeling love. I was like, wow, holy shit. Bartice and I are both very much falling in love with Nancy. Are you really falling in love with Nancy? Because all you've done was talked about your sexual escapades, your trip to South Africa, which everyone knows about in the world, and now your philosophical outlook on how shit marriage is. And she's in total been like, hmm, that's deep. Are you really in love with her or are you in love with yourself and a woman who just says, hmm, a lot? I can get you something that says, hmm. And one of us uh, will, will hopefully marry her. I want to live it passionately. With Nancy, I'll be damned if I leave it here. I'm gonna shoot my shots. That's really good, bro, but I just don't understand the connection. Do, do you feel happy? Has she done anything to make you feel anything, bro? Or are you just on the show as a robot that they put in so that Bartiz has any semblance of competition? You ready? So let me put my headphones on. The next day they go on the pods and they start dancing and Andrew dancing is just proves that he's a robot. <laughs> hey DJ, play track number two. Stay to color. The beat's gonna drop. Yup, yup, yup. I know about beats. I've been studying it since yesterday. Beetroots are a thing that come onto the ground, and they're fruit, uh, vegetables. They're red. They make a cheap red. Andrew makes me happy, and whether it's his ease, his sexy voice, <laughs> his level of intellect is so sexy. Netflix did him dirty, man. <laughs> he's he's so sexy. Like I think I like about my favorite thing about him is like he's really smart and he's really thoughtful. Yeah. How do you feel about family living with you and your spouse? My mom is a little bit more like I like traditional values, and so my parents did that with their uh, parents. There's space for a person. Like why not? In law in the back. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. You sounded like an alien. You said, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know what? Nancy actually stopped calling him out. You sound like an alien. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't want to me. Oh my God, I gotta change subject. I would think that with your sexy voice that you would be like saying sexy things and like you're not. <laughs> you'd think that with your sexy voice you'd be saying sexy things, but like you don't. Like you say like all these weird goofy shit. Like, you know, you're just like a goofball. Andrew's like, yeah, I've been philosophical this whole time. I even talked about my orgasms. You didn't find that sexy. <laughs> this dude has only talked about sexy stuff. He's, he's barely talked about anything else. <laughs> Nancy hasn't been listening, clearly. So the fact that we're doing this, like, I'm just like, I love this very... so much. I love this so much. I'm so happy. I cannot be happier. I'm like the happiest person in the world. It's like I won the lottery and then shoved it up my ass. So this, I feel like, has brought us so much closer. And I made a connection with Andrew and Bartise. I came here for amazing. So now Nancy has to figure out who she really wants because Andrew is very much someone she can learn from. He's... He's got his philosophical nature. He's more stoic as a character, whereas Bartis is high energy and matches that Nancy energy. Who is she going to choose? Meow. <laughs> no. Yo, if you meow for the wrong person, though, at least it's like they won't know what you're doing. So it wouldn't be as embarrassing as just yelling out a wrong name. No, but it would. Like, just saying the words meow as a human being, it's just like, you know, it's just much. I wouldn't. Andrew. First heard your voice. Oh my god. I just realized Andrew's in a suit and a full suit. When he's in a half suit, he's philosophical. When he's in normal clothes, he's talking about sex. When he's in a full suit, he's gonna propose, isn't he? It, uh, it filled me with happiness and energy. It made my heart giddy. My heart started beating at a rate faster than the normal humans, indicating that I was obviously feeling an emotion that was susceptible to the chemicals in my brain, which is something called L-O-V-E, which I've come to know as love, which all humans experience at some point in their life. And now is that time for me to you, love. From Andrew to you, Nancy. Uh, I've fallen more and more in love with you. Would you stand and approach the wall? Stand and approach the wall. I envision a future together where we inspire each other, where we push each other. Nancy, you inspire me by saying things like, hmm, quite, quite the input there. Every time I go to my favorite place in the world, South Africa, I think of you, Nancy. When I look at the... <laughs> <laughs> when I look at the animals, I think about you. We build a family, build an empire, and explore the world. That future makes me smile. Nancy Rodriguez, would you marry me? They even got down reluctantly too. Like that was like a robotic Nancy. <laughs> would you make me the happiest man in the world? It just doesn't feel right. F you, Nancy. This is the one part I think Nancy fucked up with. I think if anything in the series, Nancy should have got with Andrew. I'm sorry I spoiled it. I'm sorry I'm spoiling it for you. But Nancy clearly isn't picking Andrew. You clicked on the video knowing it's about Bartise and Nancy. I wish. I wish. Because you know what? Andrew's pretty interesting. Yes, he doesn't know how to tell a joke. He's just became a human days ago. He, he, he's like an E.T. He's like a 29-year-old E.T., okay? He went to South Africa. He thinks that's the best country. Clearly, this man has not gone to fucking Sweden, okay? Nancy should have got with Andrew. And we could have had some good banter. I would have loved to see Andrew throughout this whole series be like, what is water skiing? Oh my god, this is so fun. I like this. You ruined it for me, Nancy. You ruined it. And when I think of what our life could be the life that we could have together. Like, I I don't doubt that we wouldn't live a good life. Great life, but just not. Even the way he sat back was like a robot. Like, he went back into, like, his stance, like. Men have this persona they want to give off. And so there is a lot of deception. Andrew is too cool, too calm, too collected. Ah, oh, girl. I mean, that's maybe just Andrew. What, you wanted to see him be like, I'm Andrew. Whoa, 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 whoa. This man is just, he's just a stoic person. It's, I think Nancy essentially is explaining that Andrew hasn't matched her energy and that might be something that she needs. I genuinely think that she probably would have benefited from a man who's more stoic anyway, but I guess she doesn't want that. And that's her choice, her prerogative. Unfortunately, Andrew the sociopath, in terms of deception, she got it on the money. Andrew's deception now is at its highest point and he does something that has made season three viral. What are you thinking about? Yeah, so uh, the producer asks him what he's thinking about and he's sad, but he's Andrew, the robot sociopath. So he says and does this. Are you rolling? My five. Is this too much? A little bit. 
There it is. Are you, are you, are you, are you rolling? Yeah, one second, Just Let me. <laughs> Nancy left me. It didn't feel good, to be completely honest. I guess I feel, I feel satisfied that I went for it. I guess I feel, uh, one second. I feel really bad. Oh my god, he's really trying. I feel really... Oh, think about angry memories, Andrew. Ah, oh, crap, I was born three days ago. I don't have any. Like, your eyes are hurt me, but... Yeah. I don't want to... Um... Oh my god! What is wrong with you, Andrew? You deceptive sociopath. You couldn't cry, so you had to fake crying. You couldn't have just been like, yeah, nah, you know, uh, it's all right. If you didn't feel the emotion, you shouldn't have to do this. Oh my goodness, he's one of those people who just doesn't feel anything. But it is going to bother you because you're human. And, and I was human. I am human, still. And it's fine. It's actually great. Don't feel anything. Just do your thing, bro. What? He had to resort to putting water drops in the eyes? This is like some... Lower class acting level. This is when you like have a play and you need a, to cry for a scene and you just go out and pour a bucket of water on your face and you're like, <laughs> oh my goodness, look at that tear. It came from the side there. No, your eye doesn't work like that, bro. I never thought I could care for someone that would bring me to tears. <laughs> <coughs> bravo, 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 my good sir. Bravo. If you ever want to know why I love this. I like Andrew, man. I never thought that uh, someone would bring me to tears. One more second. Just... <laughs> I'm so sad. That was amazing. Oh my goodness. How could they not have seen the opportunity to keep him in the series? This is crazy. This man has given them the best performance of season three. If you don't see the problems that arise with a person who's this deceptive and you have a reality TV show and you're not taking advantage of that, you're losing us money. You're losing the viewers. I really wanted to see more of Andrew. But anyway, that's the end of Andrew. And now it's just back to Bartice and Nancy. And Bartice has uh, done away with Raven and Nancy has done away with Andrew, leaving them just to be in each other's company. And Bartice wastes no time proposing. <laughs> I'm looking into this wall in this pod, Nancy Rodriguez. I'm looking into this wall in this pod, Nancy. Will you make me happy? <laughs> I like how he just says things that are there. I'm on one knee and I'm looking into this wall of this pod on a show called Love Is Blind, season three. Nancy, will you marry me? Will you marry me? Me and Nancy have been very serious. So yeah, Nancy says yes to Bartice because Bartice, I assume, matches her energy and maybe the outlook that she wants to possess more than Andrew. I still think it was the wrong decision, but again, I'm not marrying Bartice, you are. Anybody whose name starts with Bart and doesn't end with Simpson, you gotta ask yourself what it is. I'm curious about this experiment as far as not trying to share physical attributes. Regardless of what she may look like or what I may look like, I am actually attracted to Nancy right now. I have never seen her before. So here's the thing. Here's the thing with Love is Blind. And um, it's it's happened to a lot of contestants. Initially, they see the person and they are like, oh my God, you look amazing. You look wonderful. And the cameras are on. Is there ever going to be a contestant that sees the person and immediately is like, yeah, because of course they're not going to do it. The closest we've ever got to that was our boy Shake, who said she was good, grabbed her ass on the first day and within like a day was like, oh, you look like my auntie. Nobody's going to tell the person or the other person that they're not attracted to them. Nobody's going to say it initially, which causes problems because it then happens later on. And Bartice is just fooling himself by saying stuff like, yeah, it doesn't matter when he clearly knows it matters to him. He's 25, but it doesn't matter. My throat is solid horse after our date. Andrew would have liked that one. My throat is solid horse after our dates. Wow. Nancy, if, you know, if there hadn't been a pot and a wall between you two, I would have just, I would have called some, I would have called someone. Jesus, that is not something you should be saying. I'm so excited to meet my male twin. Probably doesn't look like me. I hope he doesn't. That would be weird. Nancy has a habit as well of just saying some random shit and she doesn't stop her thought process. So it's a weird thought anyway. And then she just keeps going with it. She said that uh, he's my male twin and that should be it. But then she started thinking about what a male twin version would look like of her. And it would just look like Bartice with like her hair. And then she keeps going. What does an energetic man version of a Nancy look like? I don't, I don't stop. 
It's time to stop. Like it, it doesn't. Okay, she's just so like she's her Nancy isms are like her own little thing. She's such a Nancy. Like she's in her own Nancy world. I don't know if I'm ready to see him. I want to see him, but I'm scared that I'm gonna pass out, hit my head. Just, just, just stop. Just stop. Stop. Pass out is good. Uh, she's like elaborating. I'm scared that I'm gonna pass out, hit my head on a rock. The rock's gonna be like four inches. A little blood will come out, and I'll be rushed to the hospital. What is this hypothetical? <laughs> you better run! Ah. You better run, girl! <laughs> Come here! Oh my god! Oh my god, that's a height difference in all. Didn't, they did not show it like that before. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be wiping my ass. And I already told him that, and he said he wouldn't, but I'll, I'll make him do it anyways. What are these hypotheticals? Nancy, Nancy, can you just chill with these hypotheticals? When I'm old, he's gonna wipe my ass when I do a poo-poo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is not the first conversation, Nancy. This is not the second or the third conversation. This is like some extra for experts that you need to be having. Nance, calm down. Nance, calm your pants. So anyway, this is like what happens in Love is Blind. You meet the person, uh, you're engaged to them, and you have four weeks before you get married. In that four weeks, you have to sort it out, man. It's probably good to go through an issue. It's probably good to find and explore every crevice you can in that four weeks. I, I think I said four months, four weeks one month of knowing a person. They also meet each other's parents. It's a very fast moving show. And in order to really sustain a marriage, an act of like holy matrimony for the rest of your life, you have to really know this person. Uh, anyway, the first night, of course, is the honeymoon phase, and Bartice and Nancy decide to get sexy with it. Both get in the bathtub together. And it sounds sexy. It looks like two people who are marooned on a ship that's sinking, like a lifeboat. No, it's right here. It looks like everybody That tub is way too small for those two. Have you ever unclogged the toilet? That's way too unsexy for the first honeymoon conversation. You can't get engaged to someone and then be like, Honey, honey. How, uh, do you like take a lot of shits or like, how does that, how does it, how does your poo poo, like, uh, is it a good color? Not the first conversation. Not, this is not sexy talk. Don't, Nancy, what the fuck? One time I didn't have a lunger and there was a situation, I was like, fuck, I need this to go down, like, can this, like, wad of toilet paper go down with, like, <sighs> I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. I wonder how Andrew would react in the situation. He'd probably sit in with his full suit in the bathtub. Yeah, that taking a shit reminds me of the mud huts in Africa when I traveled all across the globe to South Africa, where the lions and the llamas and the elephants looked at me like I was weird, and I looked back at them and I said, don't judge. I'm on season three of Love is Blind. And they just walked away because they knew I was the real alpha. I, 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 w I just wish she wouldn't talk about taking a shit on the first day of their honeymoon. I wish that wasn't her first thought. Well, I grabbed the, the scrubber of the toilet and I was like, let me just like jab it into the... Jesus, what? So, <laughs> I was like, I was like, let me just... Yeah, honestly, it got to the fact that Bartice is like, yo, I need to get drunk. Honestly, I'm not drunk enough for this conversation that the person I engaged feels that she is having an engaging conversation with me about Dookie. Ted, this is the plunger and like, let this shit go down and wind down I'm gonna kiss you now. Please, please shut up. Please shut up. Please shut the hell up. That probably starts Bartice's thought process off. Maybe I had second thoughts. The thing is that on Love is Blind, once you meet the person, you also meet everyone else in terms of the couples. You see what you missed out on, so to speak. And I mean, I'm not sure if it's meant to be unhealthy, but it is a little bit because you see all of the people that you could have been with. Now, a good guy or someone, a good girl or someone who's deeply in love will look at them and be like, it doesn't matter. I'm just happy to be with my person. But someone like like Bartice, he doesn't back up his words with his actions. He said that there is no way that this show is in any way about looks. But as soon as he sees Raven, every it takes a 180. In the pods, I had a connection with Bartice. We both are like exercise people. Nancy bacon drinks. You know, um, carry the bacon bacon wrapped scallops. Not good. Nancy drinks. Nancy's in the corner like, no, I'm eating this bacon. I'm, I'm, I'm this whole pig is gone by me. Nancy, Nancy, the pig killer. Peppa Pig ain't got shit on me. I'm, 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 I'm. 
heads turning, right? But I, I kind of experienced that same thing. We both are the attention getters. So I'm excited to talk to her. I'm excited to pick her brain. I'm like to connect in real life and see how it goes. What the hell was that whole sentence? Bartise is now looking at Raven and he realized clearly that she's attractive and he's having some sort of, I don't know, feelings about this. The whole sentence that he said, this whole thing about, I chose Nancy and then, and, and, you know, that's, that's just how it is. And I'm looking to get to know a Raven better because let's see where that goes. It was just a conversation that had no... It was one... It was a Michael Scott conversation. It has no... Sometimes he just starts it and he doesn't even know where it goes. That's what she said. If I had any regrets in the pod experience, it would be cutting things off too quickly with Raven and not giving her that last day or day and a half that we would have had together. God damn it. He's already having regrets. Imagine having a partner and saying you have regrets about another person. That is just a recipe for failure in terms of how you are supposed to run a relationship. Usually the start of a relationship the foundation, the initial period, the building blocks set you up for the future. Because you might have problems in the future that you can't fix if you don't go through them now. I, I, I know that some people are like, oh, we don't fight and then we only started fighting later on. It's because you haven't addressed the issues that probably need to be addressed at the forefront of the relationship. Sometimes having those issues at the start really can set yourself a better future. It's not always true. But definitely saying stuff like, I already regret it. How's Nancy going to feel about that? God damn it. Do you think Nancy regrets Andrew, the greatest man on planet Africa? <laughs> there's definitely feelings there. And it's crazy that there's two girls in the same spot that I was falling in love with. Yeah, they get an ass shot of uh, Raven as she leaves. As the classic little Wayne line goes, hate to watch her go, but I love to watch her leave. Yeah, and Bartise needs a drink because he's like, this is crazy, bro. That ass won't quit. That ass won't quit and my wife talks about shit. That's that's the problem. Drink heavy. Go in bed right. Ugh. So they have the party, everyone meets each other. There's not a lot of talking going on. Bartise doesn't really meet Raven in that sense. He just gets a look at her. So if you're a guy and you're talking to your girl, whatever Bartise does, listen to me, genuinely do the opposite. Just everything he does is wrong. Everything. For the love of God, don't do this. This is wrong on any level. And if you're a girl who had to go through this from another guy, I just have mercy on your soul for even bearing the shit that he's about to do. Brace. So they get into bed after the party and they start talking talking about the other couples and what they think of them. Bartiste then gets to Raven and my God, does he fuck it up. I'd love to see everybody for the first time. Raven. Wrong, already wrong. I loved seeing Raven for the... If you have a partner, ask yourself, would you like your partner to do that to you? If the answer is no, don't do it to them. Would you like it if your partner's like, I love seeing Barry. Oh my God, he's so sexy. If you're okay with hearing that, then you're completely fine to say it. If you're not, then don't. It's like the typical girl that I would go after in the real world. Like Ravens, she came down, she wore the tight clothes. I was like, oh. wrong. Stop. That's too, too wrong. Don't stop talking about how tight her clothes are. You're going to make this girl feel insecure about herself. Okay, she's a fucking smoke show. She's hot as shit. I was like, okay. Okay, she's hot as shit. Makes your girl feel in inadequate. Like she's trying to be hot for you. It's three things. Me and Raven couldn't the pods because we were so similar. And I literally... Okay, okay. It's so similar, like, you know, emotionally and stuff. Also, making a girl feel like she's not emotionally available to you. She just... You're hitting every wrong area that you could possibly hit at this point, bro. Fried because of you and Raven. Mm, yep. Yeah. Talking about crying because you can't make a decision after engaging with someone. Maybe you're the alien for not understanding a woman's feelings. I didn't know that. Damn. Nancy and Raven, I was like, fuck. I'm literally having feelings for multiple women right now. <laughs> but you, you were up here, right? So I was like, damn, I have to trust my gut. And then here we are now. So it was a wild night. It was a wild night for me. Are you cool with me being that one? This motherfucker said, she's so hot. She's so hot. We are the perfect match. And I had feelings for both of you. And I have to trust my gut. And we're here. This is what got me here. How do you expect her to take this? Just think to yourself for a second. How do you, after saying all this shit, how do you expect someone to take this information, process it, and feel. As a human being who has feelings for you, how do they feel? Think about that. Is the reaction gonna be good? 
Like, what the fuck? <laughs> if you want a tall, blonde fitness girl, go to a body competition, find her there. Don't go on an experiment that is gonna potentially line you up with someone who's the complete opposite. High five, Nancy. You hit it right, you hit it on the head, Nancy. Nancy still, you got it exactly right. Don't go on a show that's called Love is Blind if you want something physical. What are you gonna say, man? Nancy's just in a position. And you know what? She reacted so much better than I ever would if someone did that to me. She just, she, she took it like a goddamn champ, genuinely. She just didn't say anything mean and she had every right to. Go, Nancy. It's not mine. It's not mine. I was just, fuck it. I don't know. How do you even sleep in the same bed after doing that? How do you do if 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 a goal was, you know, my goal was like, man, I met I met Jimmy today and oh, 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 oh. Uh, anyway, I'm here with you now. I'd be like, no, you're on the couch. With my dog GT. Actually, my dog GT's in the bed with me. You're on the couch alone. Last night, Ortiz mentioned Raven would definitely be the type of girl that I date, like body type wise. The next day they start talking about it and Nancy's at least sort of like processing the feelings and having that conversation, which is important to have like it's good to not bottle up these emotions it's good to you know talk to your partner be like this is how i feel if this is how you feel let me tell you how i feel and both of them have to listen the whole point of this is that our foundation was built off of that emotional connection me, me and Raven had a, a huge like connection because we shared like everything fitness related and everything that's not that, didn't anybody you go to the gym with you'd have a fucking connection with i gym with my homie that doesn't mean i want to see him in my bed every night and give him a soft kiss on the head before i go to bed and be like sleep tight my little angel well, just, just because we lift weights together what are you joking i i just couldn't get you out of my gut when i was trying to have a date with raven what am i i'm doing like what am i sitting here like fall, <laughs> falling in love with two girls so nancy is very easy to win over and that's not a knock against her that just proves to see how like it just proves to show how uh tough she is mentally that she can repress or put out these things that bartiz said and not hold them against him and move to the next realm she's a very very awesome person for that and um, Bartise essentially explains that her energy is the thing that won her over, whilst also explaining that he conventionally goes for people who are also gym attractive and stuff like that. So he's trying to have his cake and eat it at the same time in a very sly way. I don't even know if he knows. I think it's uh, sort of subconscious, even in his mind. But it is happening, and that is worth noting. So things uh, move on to the next event where they have a pool party and all of the people meet each other. This time, they actually get to speak to each other because the first time was just like them seeing who the people were without actually interacting. This time, Bartise is able to have a conversation with Raven, and he does. Doing great. How are you? I'm doing good, too. Good. good to see you in person. Raven's a beautiful girl. She's very fit, great eyes, the hair, the, the curls. She's just a very gorgeous girl. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. You, you have you're engaged, you know? I'm telling you, I'm I'm one of those people. If I put a ring on it or if she puts a ring on it, I'm sorry, man. I'm not going to be looking at other people. I can't. I can't allow myself. It's just not. I feel like dirty saying it. Oh, you're gorgeous. It just feels like once you, you know, once once you commit to someone, you got to you got to stay that way. Like, okay, yeah, she probably, yeah. she probably baddie. and then I saw you walk down. That's kind of like, damn, yeah, fuck. She's a good-looking girl. So, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> not about that, but no, I had to bring it up. Give me a comment. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah, thank so. you. Okay, all right. Bar Bartice is, uh, I'm assuming being charming, this is him doing his attempt at game. I'm, I'm not even sure. You're, you're a good looking girl, you know, you know, you know I, had to, I had to compliment you, you know, I, you gotta, I, I had to say it. Okay, alright, now that you've said it, that's enough. She clearly didn't accept a compliment, because if you compliment someone and they say thank you and they don't reciprocate, you should take that little hint, because here's like a little nugget, if a person likes you or wants to anything to do with you, they will make the effort. They will. I was very, I was very I impressed when I saw you. Okay, all right. You're very impressed. She's a very impressive lady. Thank you. I appreciate that. I was like, girl. Okay, all right. This is, please stop. That's why I was like, add a girl. Yeah, I was, I was like, add a girl. You know, that's that's what I said. I said, add a girl. And, then, and then now I'm saying it again, add a girl. You know, and then, and then you're impressive. Your body is like sculpted by the gods, you know. Add a girl, you know. My wife looks like she was sculpted by a, a, a hot dog vendor yeah. Yeah. she said you are what you eat i said how many hot dogs did you eat yeah. the reason why i'm not super flattered by what bartice is saying is because like bartice never had any compliments for the pod raven he has compliments for the physical raven raven actually doesn't take this well because she says that bartice didn't really even compliment her in the pod she's basically saying bartice had nothing really nice to say about her personality or anything other than her physical attributes which i'm sure a lot of girls who physically look great don't want to just be taken in the sense that all they have is the 
physical, you know, nature. I don't think anybody really wants that. I'm sure she wants to be loved and cared for on an emotional level, just as most people do. So Bartis not saying that really shows his actions speak louder than his words. His words are saying, I don't care about people's looks. His actions clearly, I, I like what I see. I say, I say, I had a girl, you know. We are so emotionally incompatible. I don't know what we would say in real life besides like, oh, I like to go to the gym. It's a like... Raven, in the nicest way possible, rejects Bartise's whatever is left off the door that is not closed. She closes on him and says, you know, we don't have anything emotionally in common. Like, we, we talk about nothing and all you're doing is you're being vaguely sexually attracted. You're thinking with the wrong head right now, which Bartise is doing and needs to put that away because it's only temporary. I am not interested at all. It's not a thing for me. Matt was forgettable. I didn't even remember that he was a part of this. Uh, yeah, she also forgot about this guy called Matt who's in the series and he will feature a little bit in this one but more so in the other video I have on Colleen, Matt, Cole, and Zena which is a... Oh, that's a, that's another one in itself. But yeah, Matt is a very forgettable human. I even forgot he existed. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> House tonight. It is again nighttime. Bartise and Nancy are talking. <sighs> Let's see if Bartise has learned his lesson. You talked to Raven today. How was it? Talking to Raven, it was good. Seeing her in, in the flesh, it makes sense. Like, gorgeous girl, I told her this. Okay, so you're just, you're just not really changing your approach here. Expecting different results, you know what they say? But the definition of insanity is... Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again. Shit to change. I learned that in Far Cry 3 when I did the same mission over and over again expecting to win. Should've took my own advice. On paper, me and you make sense. You're fucking gorgeous, you're fit. Just stop calling her fucking gorgeous. For once, can you lie to yourself? Can you lie to your girl for the sanity of human nature? Can you just say she's a good looking girl instead of she's so fucking gorgeous? Ugh. I wish I could motorboat her titties. Can you, can you not? Not every thought has to have validation by being in the space of the realm where you talk about it, okay? We've all had some weird thoughts. I had a weird thought. I was like, hey, what if a hammer had legs? I don't say it. I don't say it. it makes me seem crazy. I just always think maybe if the hammer had legs, it could get the job done without me being there. We look good to the naked eye. If you were to look at Raven and look at me and we're at a bar or at a restaurant, that would make sense. Just shut the hell up, Artis. What are you doing, man? My biggest fear in my previous relationships, I've fallen in love before, but in my previous relationships, that love is fizzled out. So then Bartis drops sort of a bombshell explaining his emotional immaturity as a 25 year old, someone who's not able to commit. It's a problem that some, you know, young men have. And I, I say this, I'm a similar age to this man. Like, I, I get it. I think a lot of guys uh, go through it. I, I think that it's not an uncommon thing to have happen. From my perspective, with things that I know is that you find a person who really changes your outlook. It has to be someone who really makes you feel a type of way that you cannot really get through things without and when you look at that and when you experience life without them even for a day or something you realize that it just doesn't make sense to not be around that person i think that you have to have someone to change that or to mature you as a man that's what a great goal or partner is in this sense i'm talking about man i'm very sorry by the way uh i i want to be more inclusive in the fact that i'm just talking about partner to partner but um specifically for me and things that's how it works you find someone who can actually get you to that level commitment if you're doing monogamy if you're doing po polygamy and stuff bro nancy raven matt the forgettable one take all of it. if we held a wedding right here right now what do you think the answer would be yes yeah. your answer right now would be yes mm -hmm. really bartis i don't know if he just wants nancy to fight with him but he's like you know i need to experience you in real life we need to go through some shit and then he's like uh would, what would you do if if uh, i asked you to marry me right now and she says yes and instead of being like okay with it he's like really really you'd be okay with it. you don't have problems okay almost expecting her to say some shit even though we've never gone through any challenges yes you don't know how i handle any conflict mm -hmm. you want to jump into this as open as we can Send me up. That's baller, man. Nancy just winning me over at this point. She's she literally said, hey, I'm a ride or die. That's it. And you don't have to overcomplicate it. I said, yes, I'm going to be there. Nancy. Nancy. God damn. Bartis, you find a good one. Not every girl is like that. I just want you. Wow. Nancy better find love.
Nancy deserved love, I'll tell you that much. Anyway, so this is after the honeymoon phase. Nick and Vanessa Lachey visit the couples to see what's happening. And they're like, hey, you guys now uh, move into like a little apartment and now you're living together for the first time. And that is, you know, a huge deal because it's easy to see someone a few hours a day and then enjoy their company, bask in it, maybe bang them, <laughs> then leave. When you're living with someone, you bang them and you don't leave, you just stay there. And then you have 23 or more hours in the day. So you got to figure that out. How will you integrate your lives, careers, your homes. Every time, every time Nick talks, how would you integrate your lives, careers, homes? What will you do? Honey, honey, stop. Stop doing that thing from Star Trek. I'm just trying to be me. Please stop. But anyway, Nancy and Bartice are now living together and that proves to be a whole new challenge. So. Are you nervous about first time living with a woman? Not really. Yeah. I know that you'll be patient with me and you'll talk to me if there's any problem. So yeah, um, Nancy and Bartice live together. The thing that Nancy didn't really disclose to Bartice or anybody in general is that she was, she had a partner. She's uh, now divorced, but partner was a realtor and then went halfsies with a house on or basically just put her name under the house. And Nancy is now showing Bartice her practice of like flipping houses. And he now realizes that her ex is in her life more prominently than he had initially imagined. And he gets a little jealous. Nancy's ex is a lot more involved in her business and, uh, than I thought. Like in the pods, I thought it was like, yeah, he's there. He's the but realtor. Like, yeah. yeah, he's, he's the yeah. realtor is what he told me in the pods. Yeah, I mean, if you have a mortgage together, then you're still like in contact. There's no way you're not in contact when you have a mortgage. And it's it's sort of something that you need to bring up with like the other person, I would say. Those, uh, those financial ties when you get older and all these situations that you might have had with another partner that might uh, seep into your current relationship, something that you definitely should talk about you can't be like two years into a relationship and be like yeah i have a kid oh my god i forgot to tell you surprise are you still paying on the mortgage no he is, he is. yeah okay so so but you're still earning income from any no tenants he is he gets everything so you get so nancy's just got her name on the mortgage and as soon as this man pulls out like he probably did in life she is just gonna be left with debt that's the way i see it it's our money together we make two hundred thousand we make three hundred thousand you know you got a bonus. We got a bonus. Once we're married, my debt will be your debt. You know <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Come on. That's what marriage is about. Like, have, uh, you know. You take you take this, I'll take that. I'll take the money, you take the debt. You, know? you got to pay child support. That's your deal. But uh, you got a bonus. We got a bonus. You got taxes. That's yours. You got, uh, you know, a huge pay rise. We got a pay rise. You got to renovate. We got to renovate, but you have to pay. Having just started like my real careers, I don't have just $3,000 laying around. And she bought this place for $120,000. That's freaking crazy. This place costs 120 k I live in the wrong country. Somebody get me a ticket to America. Somebody marry me and take me to America. Please, maybe I should go on 90 Day Fiance. Play is meeting my mom and my dad. Oh, so now comes the time when Artis has to meet the family. And now he meets Nancy's family and her two absolutely annoying brothers. You know when you meet a family and the brothers are so protective that you're like, do you want to date your sister? Like, why are you interrogating me to the point that you're asking me unattainable questions? Things that I can't possibly answer. When you get to that point, and I'm only saying this because I definitely have had this happen, you need to chill, bro. The worst thing that could happen is that they disapprove of our engagement. That's not so bad. If they disapprove, then, you know, you tell them they need to approve. It's fine. And my brother's punch parties. Okay, weird, but all right. Because he says something that triggers them. Okay, this is, you're doing the thing again, Nancy, where you, the hypothetical is getting too, too detailed. And then, and then it turns to a brawl. Nance, stop. And, and I, I mean, joking but not okay all right well then you need to control your brothers because that's that would be that would be not okay in life hi hello hello <laughs> gotta say i got a lot of questions there for you boy. oh yeah you ready for <laughs> <Lots of questions. laughs> just the man i was looking for so yeah, uh, apparently the brothers have some questions they take him out back which i thought was gonna be like a whole different thing <laughs> but they sit like on either side of him like they're doing an interrogation and they start uh-huh are you you're older or younger than nancy 
I'm all younger. Okay. Wow. Wow. You older or younger than Nancy? I'm I'm old. Nah, I'm younger. But I'm older than you. But I'm older than you. It's like looking at a little brother. I know you're bigger than me and all that, but I need to know a little bit more about you, you know, so I don't feel like I'm talking to a little kid or something, you know? I got, you know, like, I got to know, like, about you because he's like... I don't even know who you is. Like, what? You just want to tell me about yourself, man. My second career now. I have my CPA license, which is an accounting license. Okay. Um, uh, he didn't know what that was. I have my CPA, which is accounting. Okay. So this guy counts. I've seen it on Sesame Street. What's so good about it? No, no, no. Accounting. Yeah, he counts, you idiot. Right now, I'm in financial due diligence. The whole marriage thing mm -hmm. of all people you could have fell in love with, you fall in love with my sister. Why would you say it like that, Steve? Of all people in the world, you fell in love with my sister. Why would you, like, backhand compliment her? Everything you explained, the way she made you feel, it just... it. it it's a little bland to me. It's mm -hmm. not nothing special to me. All right, Steve, I didn't know that it had to be special to you that I'm fucking your sister. I didn't know that that was you needed to be serenaded as well. I didn't know that you were involved in it that much that I needed to woo you in order to woo your sister. I didn't know that when I got down on one knee, I should have put the ring on your finger before hers. She's just so open and friendly. Like, she brings the best out of everyone. Okay. So The fact that she brings it out of me is... Well, she brings that. it out of all of us. She, okay, she's like Mother Teresa. She just brings it out on everyone. She's like, okay, she's helping all these people. I really got to know your sister more than I've ever gotten to know any girl in the real world. So you're telling me if my sister would have gained 400 pounds, you... I'm gonna smack Steve in the face. I'm gonna smack his fucking face. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take one of those foam things and be like, Steve, get it together. You need to get it together, buddy. Why, you wouldn't love my sister if she was 400 pounds? No, no. Because she would have been betraying who she is as a person because she's not 400 pounds now is she that's like saying if your sister suddenly changed her fucking skin color and thought it was okay if she just suddenly started you know doing a certain type of tanning maybe start looking like akon would you still love her no i'd question what the hell is wrong with her are you kidding me steve if someone's gonna gain that much weight then it's going to be a big issue and i don't mean that in a pun way if she gained 400 pounds i would hope that we connected early enough to where she'd be okay with me saying hey let's go on a little diet here there would still be an emotional love there because that's what we did in the pause i mean i'll say i'm not attracted to a 400 pound they're literally actually making him talk about this. She's not gonna gain 400 pounds. So seriously, just no. Ask better questions. If she was broke, would you still love her? If she, if so, realistic situations might actually get realistic answers. If she had a genie and she, you know, gave you two wishes, what would you wish for? Is that, Steve, is this gonna help you let me bang your sister? Like, what is gonna help you get your stupid head around it? Right now, you know, getting to know you. It's iffy, you know, because I don't know you like that. Mm -hmm. Like, how she, <laughs> she made you. Mm -hmm. But Gee, oh my god, did you want to be in the pod? Did you want Bartiz to be in the pod wooing you with his legs up dangling like this? Of course you don't know him like she knows him. Have you kissed him? Have you laid in bed with him? If you two sat in the bathtub, it would break, okay? Seriously? What? If my sister approves, you know, I can't, I'm not just gonna fold over you and tell you, okay, but you know, we're gonna hang out and chill and... What are you saying, man? Fat man, what are you talking about? I'm not just gonna be okay if my sister's okay with it, like I won't be okay with it but like we're gonna keep hanging out and chill and like you know we'll see how it goes if i don't like you then she's not gonna date you no stop so yeah. I, that makes sense i appreciate mm -hmm. the honesty yeah, yeah. yeah man that overprotection like there's a point where it's it's cute and it's great to a point but to the point where you're now controlling someone else no so now comes the video where i just a little warning this is about a word that rhymes with contortion it starts with a uh nancy's views on it are quite hectic and uh yeah just a little trick of warning here hopefully you guys are getting through this they do have a conversation about it and it proves to be quite uh interesting kids yes what is like your two to four years is like the minimum so it all starts with the fact that nancy's 31 and she wants to have kids young like very soon and bartis is like i still want at least four years because he's 25 and nancy says the longer you wait the more there's a chance of having a uh sort of like health issue or uh the kid might be in some way uh challenged and then she goes on to say that she's seen so many people in her line of work so many kids are challenged that if she had the chance she would a word that rhymes with contort it women who wait till 37 38 even 
36 and then their kids have birth defects. My mom had me at 36. Exactly, that's the point. This is the prime example. I could never do that, especially knowing that we were trying to have a kid, just a <laughs> mission because they're gonna have some challenges. I am mentally tough enough to handle whatever challenge that may present. So Bartis is basically saying whatever, you know, the condition a child may have, I'm okay with it. I don't want uh, that to happen. And Nancy's saying if there's a chance that that might happen, uh, I might contort that and not have that kid ever have to go through it. I don't know how to get into this one. I just think that is an interesting conversation to have within those four weeks. If you need to have a for whatever XYZ reason, have it, you know? Thank you for listening. You know, they have that conversation and the short of it is that Nancy sees it uh, the opposite way of Bartise. Whatever stance you are, the fact is they're both disagreeing. Now, Bartise gets Nancy to meet her family and he sort of leads her into a very, very tough path by bringing up the same conversation, which he then has to have with Bartise's family, which is just not really a good thing to do, but she has it anyway. Like, I don't think Bartise did the right thing. He sort of set her up in a way. Sorry, I'm really passionate about this. <laughs> such blessing so to think that you know it's able just for them to not be here it's just crazy this is the first conversation you have with your possible future partner's family you're really going into the deep end just like that huh this is just really how it is i only believe that now because of what i've seen i was working with kids who had special needs i specialized with down syndrome for me working with so many children and the struggles that they went through and then seeing their families. They bought the cheese platter out that we're gonna talk about things like, <clears throat> what's your favorite soccer team? Um, you know, I'll tell you, it's the one with kids that actually are in this physical world, Nancy. <laughs> because if there was no kids on the soccer team, there wouldn't be any. You know what I mean? Who's your favorite musician? Oh, Michael Jackson. You know, he was a kid when he was making music, Nancy. You know that? You know that? Although I was sad to see her cry, I was hoping that they would understand why I have my own beliefs. Eventually, Bartisa's sister starts crying and Nancy has that tough conversation in which she probably shouldn't have been put in that position especially early on maybe wait before you have that conversation so I don't know if Bartise was right but the after effect of that the sad thing is that Bartise is now fully going back on his whole word of him being someone who is solely attracted to Nancy for her emotional connection he's now just fully admitting that he's not physically as attracted to her and things have gotten bad things have been off uh, between me and Nancy. Physical attraction is not really there for me anymore. I didn't even think I'd be feeling this way. I didn't think it would have mattered, but I can't cover this problem with a blanket. It keeps coming up. That's the sad, ironic part. You shouldn't be able to cover it with a blanket because it should be coming up still, but it's not, and that's the problem. The fact is, you're not attracted to this woman, and you went on a show that was solely about not looks. It's really bad because Nancy's actually trying and doing this, and it's sad to hear that Bartis is like, yeah, no, no, physical attraction doesn't matter. Yeah, yes, it does, because that's what he said at the start of the show. He's not worried about physical attraction in any way, shape, or form, but unfortunately, that's a lie. I keep trying but it's just like it keeps popping up and and nancy is sad rightfully so before he would give you know 10 forehead kisses in a day it's really sad because yeah you just want to be loved and things and that's her love language and she needs that and bartice maybe not able to give her that so unless those two can figure out a compromise nothing comes off it the next night all of the couples are together once again but they bring back some of the old people and my boy andrew comes back and everybody loves him This is the first time Nancy gets to see Andrew. And I think this is the first time Andrew gets to see Nancy in person. Wow. I just want to know how it went when you proposed. I want to oh know what you say, what she say, what happened. So I told her we're going to build a real estate empire. Oh boy. I told her we're going to have beautiful, fucking hilarious banter. Oh boy. Out the day. So Andrew and Bartise then have a conversation. Bartise wants to know what happened because he knows about the proposal. Andrew seems to have gotten an update. He's, he's gotten the laugh slash smile update pack. He's now implementing that. He's looking up at the sky when he talks smiling and uh he's he's you know he seems like he's in a good place and i asked her what she and she told me happy go fuck yourself i love bartiz <laughs> <laughs> she said it would be cool for a while but long term nah andrew then steals away nancy and has a conversation with her yeah, yeah. i steal you
Bartise, being unattracted to Nancy, still is jealous if Nancy gets attention. That is what we call toxic behavior. You see, if you let someone go, well then, it's it's free game, isn't it? If you're not attracted to them, if you're not giving them what they want, and someone else can, well, you gotta think about that, huh? What have you been up to? Getting back to regular life. Yeah. I was just in South Africa trying to think about things under the palm trees that aren't there. I realized it was just an elephant trunk. It was good. Have you thought about us at all? I loved you, goddammit! <laughs> well, that came out of nowhere. I loved you, goddammit! <laughs> I used teardrops in my eyes, eyes when you when actually, actually watched watch the, the replay. replay. You're, You're going, going to, to have, have some, some shit, shit to say. To say <laughs> I mean, me personally, I have no regrets, right? Like, I proposed to you, it didn't work out. What do you have any regrets? <laughs> I do not regret saying no to you. God damn it, Nancy is, like, mint. Nancy has taken Bartisa's shit. Of course, Nancy talks about shit, so she's not an angel either, but she is solid in her foundation in terms of when she is with her man, it is just nobody else. If I was Nancy, I'd be like, damn, Andrew, you seem like a nice guy. Maybe I'll go to South Africa with you too. But my goodness, Nancy's like, no, 100%. I made the right decision. Wow. Stand by your man. The one thing that people kept saying about you was like, Andrew's so smart. And I was like, is he? Like, ha! <laughs> Got he! <laughs> Yeah, well, okay. So what, are you just gonna diss him? So after all that you've seen these past couple weeks, does it still feel like the right decision? Absolutely. We like vibe off each other so emotionally, but he's fading. Yes, yes, yes. Tell me about him fading. I want to know about that. I'm just calling Intel. Bartiz fading, black man fading. He's fading. He's a fading man. Maybe he's got a fade. Somebody tell me what fading means. Physically, from me, like, Yes, 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 physically. Yes, he's fading physically. Bartiz told me that I wasn't his type. He wants tall. Yeah, now I'm gonna put it on this head. I need to go to each temple to actually get the information. This is the one which actually works. Yes, 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 yes. He wants a different type of girl, and you are not that, and that is a problem. He wants blonde. He wants fitness model. Wow. The person that I love doesn't love me. Yeah, I'm now going to drink liquids to make it seem like I'm a human participating in things. <laughs> Yes, he doesn't love you. Tell me more about how he doesn't love you and why you do not like that. I can't, I can't. This is a person who like made a promise to me. And I'm like, what the fuck are you here for? Nancy actually starts opening up to Andrew uh, about her relationship with Bartise and how she feels wronged by the fact that this man couldn't keep the promise that he made to her about love being blind and him liking her emotionally because, because that is not what's happening anymore. And Andrew's actually listening. I, this is what I said. Andrew would have been so much fun to be on that series. They need to invite him back for the next one or something. I just think he would offer some good stuff. I'm such an Andrew stan. And so... <laughs> fuck me. <laughs> it's not fine, but it'll be okay. Damn, that's... Andrew's a baller too. It's not fine, but it'll be okay. I learned that in South Africa after, you know, someone's, you know, someone like an elephant trampled on someone and I said to him, I said, it's not fine, but it'll be okay. He died shortly after, but, you know, at least he felt good in the moment. If you ever need anything, just know that I'm there. Oh, he slid in. Yes. Deceptive sociopath Andrew back at it. If you ever need anything, you know who to call. That's the perfect way you plant the seed in her head. Only, if only Nancy wasn't a fortress of Nancy's. If she was a girl who's had second thoughts about a guy, she'd be in your arms right now, Andrew. She's just too stuck on her man because she's Nancy and she's a good woman, man. God, but Andrew tried. That was good. That was really good. That was sneaky, sly, and legal. Good stuff, Andrew. What's going on here, guys? I don't want to be, I don't want to be interrupted. Man. I don't know. Uh, just then, Bartise, probably drunk, comes in and very jealous. A mixture of Hennessy and jealousy never goes well. But yeah, so he's 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 a bit interrogative and quite. Uh, I can smell his breath from here. <laughs> you, why are you smiling so much? Like, you both smiling so much. Why are you smiling? What do you what do you got teeth for? You smiling? What do, what do you what do you think about South Africa now? What what are you smiling for, bro? You're smiling, he's smiling. Yeah, everybody's smiling, you're smiling, he's smiling, you was crying, he's smiling. Oh, man, man, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna do that for me. Should I have something to be worried about, you know? I do feel defensive here. Unless she tells me not to be worried, I'm gonna be worried. There's nothing to be worried about, man. Look at her in the eyes. Andrew really, like, has nothing to be worried about. She'll tell you. Look at her in the eyes, she'll tell you. Tell her. He's just controlling this whole thing. Okay. Oh, and then Bartise does 
Lil, he kisses her in front of the man that wanted to marry her. That's that's something I would do because I'm a toxic human. If I knew that my girl had someone that wanted to be with her, I would definitely grab her ass in front of that person because I'm a horrible human being. But you shouldn't do it. But if but if you're a horrible human, then do it. Babe, I feel like you were weird on the way home. Why? Like quiet. Quiet. So they go back into their house, Nancy and Bartise, after the party. And Bartise has enough liquor in him to just let loose. And he explains that physical attraction does matter and that it's becoming a big issue with Nancy. Why? Like quiet. Quiet. Quiet? Me? No. There was a connection there, obviously. Was I interrupting something? Did you want to continue talking to him? Do you wish it was him and not me? So Bartiz is just looking for problems at this point. He's like jealous of the fact that she talked to Andrew while also not being physically attracted to her. Like, pick one. Pick one. Don't just too... Comp very completely different issues. You can't be mad at her for talking to someone and also not be attracted to her. Like, you, you gotta pick one, bro. It hurts, baby. And I had to tell him, I was like, well, we're struggling with, like, the physical part of it. No matter what I do, like, I will never be your type. Nancy talks to Bartise and says, you know, it hurts that I'm not gonna be your type and that you won't love me the same even though you promised it. And she says it in, like, a nice way, too. She's not even, like, confrontational about it, which is very important when you talk to your partner to not be confrontational or talk in a way that is dismissive of the other person where they feel like they cannot have this conversation. I do love you though, but like, listen, looks do fucking matter. It's not superficial of me. Love isn't blind. Love is just like, you know, winking. Love is squinting, you know what I mean? Say, It's human nature of me to say, looks fucking matter. But she looks nice though. Right, Bartiz? I mean, she's not a bad looking woman. Like, maybe she's not your type, is what you're saying. In which case, you shouldn't have been on a show where the, there was a chance that you wouldn't get to date your type because nobody made you be on the show. So it feels like you're making this a problem on Nancy for just being born away and having a certain look. Like, that's not her fault. And it's really shit, like, for her to feel that way just because you like a certain thing that she isn't. How the fuck can I fucking move forward with all these things that are happening on a daily basis that just set me the fuck back? Bartiz just unloads and he says like, you know, it matters and everything sets him back and it's just this emotional toll because she's just, oh, she's so ugly to him. Just then the phone rings and it's Matt, the forgettable guy that we barely talked about. And he's angry because his girlfriend has left off into the night on a club where he is not able to figure out like where she is. Now, if you want to know more about Matt and his whole story, I will reference it way more in the other video that's coming out. But in this video, all you need to know is that Matt is angry that his partner is leaving. The reason I kept it in is because he calls Bartis and Nancy for some reason to vent. And Bartis uses this as an excuse to leave this conversation and be like, my boy needs help. I gotta help my boy. Matt! Hello, hello. Nancy! Yes, I'm here. Nancy just answers it really nicely, and this is how Matt talks to her. Nancy! Yes, I'm here. Hello? Where the fuck is Colleen? How do you talk to someone like that? Nancy! Hello, it's me, Nancy. Where the fuck is she? Um, I don't... I don't know. I think they went to the candle room. Jesus. Yeah, I know fuck. where they went. They went to the fucking club. Okay, well then why did you ask her where the F is she if she answered you and then you replied, I know where she went? What are you doing to this woman, Matt? You're not even in this episode. Just chill out, bro. Because the club is more important than coming back home to her boy. Jesus Christ. So I'm out. I'm packing my bags now. So then Bartise is like, yo, I gotta leave this conversation where I'm not attracted to you to help my boy Matt out because he's gonna leave. He's clearly in trouble. And this is one of the funniest moments like in the show unintentionally because Matt is having his problem with his partner. And meanwhile, Bartise is going over to help him. Also has problems of his own that he is trying to download onto Matt whilst helping Matt. He is using this opportunity to vent while trying to help him. This is like your therapist being like, so you had trouble as a kid? I did too. Um, and then he starts leaning on the couch and talking to you about his childhood. It's the funniest shit I've ever seen. These are two emotionally unavailable guys who cannot find the time to actually talk to people so they use other people's pain to vent their own. It's so stupid. I told her I was going back to the apartment and she said she was going to meet me here. Well, how would you not? You, you would, I would be pissed off too, honestly, yeah. Jesus Christ, this man screams a lot, doesn't he? Tell me how to stay. Tell me how to stay, because I'm out. You've been looking for a fucking problem the whole time here, dude. Maybe. Jesus Christ, they're like two crackheads just talking at each other. Maybe I have. What are you talking about? But where is she now? Y'all have no 
problems, dude. Y'all have no problems, dude. Y'all have no problems, dude. It's the, it's the, it's the two hands and the and the screaming. Y'all have have no problems, dude. No. Y'all have no problems, dude. The the hands going like, and also Matt's face going from like looking down to utter shock, but he's not holding him. He's just like, wow, what a weird sequence of events. Why you I'm jealous of where you are, bro. You have had no problems with Colleen that you fucking were revealed to her, okay? I would pay money to be in the situation you're in, okay? Wow, so then he turns it on Matt and he's like, you have had no problems with your goal, even though clearly they're having an issue right now. He decides to avoid that and says, I would pay money to be attracted to my goal, which is just such a kick in the nuts to Nancy, who doesn't have any. You're gonna be able to say, hey, I'm one of y'all is gonna say, hey, I'm sorry I was wrong. No matter who it was, both y'all kind of wrong, both, both y'all kind of right. Just horrible advice from a horrible man. Both y'all wrong, both y'all right, doesn't matter. The fact is y'all love each other and you're physically attracted, which is basically the issue for my relationship. And that's the beauty of this whole fucking thing, right? You guys are gonna love each other no matter what happens tomorrow. I get it, you're jealous of the, of the connection that we have. <laughs> I get it, I get it. You're jealous and you're you're doing all this stuff, but 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 my 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 woman is not even here right now. I may be attracted to her, but she's attracting other guys in the club. Yeah, well, at least you're attracting to her. Man looks like a whale that got beached. Oh, I'm sorry I said it, but it's true. I've only fucking seen her for okay. a week and a half. Right now, there's no fucking way I can marry this woman. So, Bartise basically tries to console Matt while also giving him his own issues and problems. And that is how that sequence ends. Not what I want to do right now. The fact that I'm trying to get through a full bucket of problems might be what's drawing me back from you physically. Bartiz is, he's got a full bucket of problems. He's got a KFC bucket of problems. He's got a two piece full of problems with some coleslaw issues on the side. Bartiz is not physically attracted to Nancy anymore because he has just gone out the window at this point. Uh, the things that she says to him, stuff about extortion, everything else has just led him to believe he's not physically attracted to her anymore, which is a big problem. It's a big, big problem. Cause I'm thinking about so much other shit that's more important than sex. But I think if I thought it wasn't salvageable, I wouldn't be here anymore. Barty says that he still thinks it's salvageable, which is not a great thing to say in a relationship, but this is love is blind. Nancy, of course, takes the time to actually explain herself. And I always enjoyed that about Nancy, that she didn't do it from a place of harm or hatred. Uh, she didn't do it from a place of spite. Nancy always comes through and tries to explain it in a very logical way. And she also has to sun him sometimes, literally, because she's older than him and really has more life experience. You just literally live life. You go through financial struggle. You go through just other things that make you increase your tolerance and your level of understanding for the world and people. Yeah, so, I mean, Nancy just suns him, seriously. She just says that, you know, there are things beyond physical attraction that matter, that contribute to that. Your tolerance of life is increased. I always say this to people. Every time you have a, a person with a hard life, you can see how humble they are because they've been humbled by life so many times. So whenever you see someone who's like genuinely a really humble person, you could probably expect that they've had some crazy shit happen to them. But also, last night, that was some immature shit to say. And she's... She's getting them. Feeling, I am feeling those like lack of physical or whatever. I am here for you, I'm here for us. Yeah. And I think the emotional connection that we have can lead us to like greatness, to saying I do. But I'm sorry that I hurt you. Like, I'm, I'm sorry that I hurt you, man. <laughs> like, like, I'm sorry, man. It's, it's gotta be one of the hardest things. I don't know how I would take it if my partner was like, I'm not physically attracted to you, uh, but I am emotionally still attracted to you. I don't know how Nancy is so calm and collected and still open to this. I don't know how she's been so strong throughout this whole process because I gotta hand it to her. I don't think I could do the same. So props to Nancy for really putting Bartise on her back and carrying him up that mountain. I still love you. I still love you too, obviously. That That is, isn't that just how you say things? I still love you. I still love you too, obviously. Come on, come on, bro. Obviously I love you. Come on, man, obviously. <laughs> come on, dude. Obviously. So it's only eight days until the wedding now and shit is about to get real. The wedding is next Thursday. To spice up their life, Artiste takes her dancing and really nothing much happens except they grow in this episode. This is episode eight, the growing episode. Everyone suddenly in the series who's been doing bad grows. I feel like the reality show just put them through this. I don't think this was actually growth. It was just something they did. I don't think you can dance your problems away. If you have financial issues and you start like, you're just still bankrupt.
Remember, Bartise, hold her close to your body. Oh, I'm not physically attracted to her. I want to push her away. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see how he's screaming and all? <laughs> Like, like she's a little child. Like, yeah! She actually moved back. She was like, oh, Bartiz, chill. He's uh, he's a very expression-full man. Anyway, this uh, dancing seems to have brought them closer together and might rekindle their spark. I can see how much, like, Nancy has made you grow. And you told me, like, you wouldn't propose just to propose. Don't let the real world ruin your magic. Mm -hmm. Keep that. Fight for that. Closer to the wedding, Bartise's sister actually comes in and explains to Bartise that what they have is special and they shouldn't let the world encroach on their special little whatever this is. Love is blind love. And they need to really, really hold that because a marriage is sacred. And she's completely right. Meanwhile, Nancy's looking fabulous in her dress. This is it. This is my dress. And I can dance. Go baby, you got it. So again, to rekindle their relationship part two, Bartise then takes Nancy to get something worse than a promise ring. It's a forever bracelet. Now I've asked a couple girls about this and everyone seems to think this is cute. I think this is like handcuffs for your soul. I, I don't know why I would ever put something around my hand that I cannot remove. It's It just seems stupid, especially if you get divorced. Are you gonna take that off? That's, that's, you need a welder to take it off? I don't want, man. If I ever need a blacksmith and it's not to forge a weapon to like cut someone up, I don't want it. All right, no turning back from here. <laughs> Big moment here. <laughs> so they get those weird bracelet things, which should signify that they're like, I guess, ready to get married. I'm assuming this is like the sort of almost the promise that, yeah, no, we're definitely going to get married. And I don't know, are you guys thinking that they're gonna get married because we're gonna find out soon enough and I don't know what you've commented down below if it's if I haven't asked you to already you should try and comment tell me whether you think they are or they aren't and then see if your answer is right you can't edit it don't do that it's looking pretty good a day before they have the bachelor and bachelorette party and Bartise is um, explaining to his homies that he thinks that Nancy really is the one this is real this, I mean I can tell y'all how I feel and how it sounds fucking crazy, but it's just so fucking real, dude. So yeah, that was the bachelor party. At the bachelorette party, it's a bit different because they have strippers and uh, Nancy says that she's tired of getting dick slung in her face because she's now engaged. But if you look at her, she's very much enjoying the dick slinging. But yeah, no, Nancy goes to the club with the Hagals and everyone's uh, grinding up on a uh, oily man that looks like he should be in Forrest's Gump. Thank y'all for being here. <laughs> anyway, we're back to the wedding. This is after the party, and uh, Nancy's walking down the aisle. Bartise is looking solid in white and black. Toda tuya. Gracias. She's all yours. Gracias, senorito. Uh, I'm sorry, senor. Chu Chupo Cabra, my brada. All right. Uh, de nada, Madavaga. Okay. See you. See you later. Oh. No kiss, no hug. I didn't practice this. <laughs> it is now time to decide if love is blind. So we finally get to the altar and the moment is here. I'm going to give you one more chance. Make your decision now or forever hold your peace. Nancy and Bartise, couple that had have their ups and downs. They seem pretty strong and Nancy is like super forgiving. Bartise seems to get it right. I think he's good. I think he's solid. What do you guys think? Do you think she's going to say yes or no? Do you think they're going to say yes or no? Nancy. Will you keep Bartise as your most cherished person? Say, I do. I do. Oh, okay. Personally, I thought Nancy was going to say no. I thought that she was not going to get over the fact that Bartise, like, literally had that thing with Raven and, like, really seemed to be more superficial and had that whole talk about how looks do matter. I really thought she was going to say no. <laughs> wow. And... Okay, Nancy, good for you. I think Bartis is gonna say yes. He'd be stupid to say no, right? It is now time to decide if love is blind. If so, say I do. I do not. <laughs> Did you see how Nancy was looking? She looked to the side to like uh, the barrister to be like, Did, they, did, did this guy just say no? Did he say, did he say I do nah? What did he say? What? Did he cough after I do? Oh my god, this is weird. 
Ah, there's my boy Steve. I don't know if you remember him. He was the brother who grilled Bartiz, and I always found him weird. He was a bit too into his sister's life. I didn't think that he'd show up, but of course, he is so into his sister's life. I'm surprised that he wasn't on the opposite end of her getting married. So, hey, Steve, how are you doing? Okay, don't hug me. At this point, Nancy gets a bit uh, flustered and needs some space. Bartiz comes out to talk to her, though. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Uh -huh. Nancy, come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Me and you. Number one, I'm sorry. <laughs> Number one, I'm sorry. Number two, you look good in that dress. Number three, can I hit it one more time before I go on my separate way? Number four, get your family out of here or I'm going to start throwing fists. I'm Bartiz, but I'm Barbeast if they come any closer. This was not... Mom, please go world. away. Mom, you have to go. You have to go, please. Uh, Nancy's last name is Rodriguez, which means she has a fiery Latina family. That much can be said. Now, I know a little bit about that, not just because of my past relation ships, but um, also I come from South African family. Pretty similar. I get it. Your family is going to want to protect you. At the same time, your family needs to stay out of this if it's just between you and your person. They need to stay out. Nancy's family does not know the meaning of that. Yes, all of it works, but there's no way I can... What I've gone through in the real world, there's no way for me in my head that it makes sense to get out there and say yes. I, I did not see this coming. I didn't see Bartiz saying no, and I don't know if it's the physical connection because he hasn't said it, but to get up all to the altar and have that very last minute decision. Ah, oh, man. I expected Nancy to be the one to have like these second thoughts. I did not expect Bartiz to say it. Um, I would say because maybe Maybe he's 25, maybe he's he's younger than Nancy. Maybe he hasn't really fully committed to the idea of committing, which is chaotic because he went on a show to commit. And I guess maybe he found out that he really wasn't ready. So love is not only blind, but love blindsides you at times. You were right, you were right. I don't, yeah. I don't want to be right. right. This you is the right only time, the this is the only time that I wish I was not right. So then weirdly enough, Nancy and Bartisa on one end talking, Steve and his mother are having struggle Olympics to the side over who should be more offended that she's not getting married. I don't get again why Steve is even offended but the mom is also like weirdly going after him and he's also going after her. I don't know what's happening. That's why I don't know how to feel because I do not want to be right. I understand your pain. You're the brother. I get her birth. What? What? What is this conversation? I understand your pain. You're her brother. But I made her. I made you. I made you feel things. You should feel sad but I should feel really sad. You you don't think she's my only daughter. Do you think I'm broken? But I, I cannot be broken. Because I gotta be strong for her. What are you what are the fuck are you guys talking about? This has nothing to do with either of you. I don't get why they're having like a weird fight as if they're somehow involved in this. You understand that? And you always gotta be there for your sister because you're her little brother. It's like this is what yeah, you fucking I signed up I, for. I signed up for this. Nancy's really mentally strong. She said that she signed up for this and she didn't just say that she's a victim. And I'm not saying that she has every right to, but she definitely has some right to say, I feel blindsided, I feel like this came out of nowhere. I feel like this is wrong. You know, I gotta commend her for this. She's she's really strong, really, really strong. Please go yeah. away, mom. I'm not gonna go. At this point, her mom comes back and she's like, nope, I've had your conversation with your brother. I remember that I gave birth to you. I have some shit to say. I know you put 100% to this. This young man is not ready for you. It's not ready for who you are. Yeah, I'm sorry, ma'am. That's cl that's why he said no. He didn't want to marry her because he's not ready. Is that the reason? Okay, I don't know if she doesn't understand that, but yeah, that's clearly the reason Barty said no. Do you hear me? Because you're too much for him. Okay, let me ask you a question then. Would you have rather me said yesterday? No one. What you just said about me being too much. Yeah, damn. This lady is trying to be intimidating. She's like, "Come here. You want to fight? You want to fight? I'm like Floyd Mayweather, but like two foot shorter and not as black. I have more hair." Ah. Sorry. Well, you know what? You knew you were gonna say no to this. Why did you let her go? All this. Or make I didn't know I was gonna say no. I had no clue I was gonna say no. Oh shit! Steve's looking like he's ready to throw hands. He's also got a weird piece of cardboard on his ear. I don't know if that's a hearing aid. Okay, Steve. We're here. We had our journey, and that journey can continue after today. Yes. No, okay. I, I'm, I'm just here. Yeah, I'm just listening. I'm listening to what he got to say. What? Steve, back off. Nobody, this is not about you, my brother. They need to have their time together. They need to have their time together. You brought us here for 
for a reason. No, he did no. not. So now we, we all brought brought listen for a reason. Well, he didn't bring you here. You just came, Steve. I don't know why Steve is so offended that his sister's not getting married. Like, I understand being protective. This is overprotective. This is like, I don't have a sister, but like if my cousin didn't get married, me going up to like the groom and being like, why didn't you marry her? Huh? What? She was supposed to be with you. I don't know what to do with my life. It's not gonna affect me that much. I mean, of course I'm gonna care, but I'd rather be there for her than like chastise him and be like, you're the piece of shit. It's weird. You brought me here. You brought your mother here. I don't owe y'all anything. I don't, don't owe them anything. You don't. You are just give, give me a give me a something. No, you you give me a little piece. Give me a little something. Give me give me a little something. You you married her. You didn't do nothing for me. I didn't. I don't. You didn't even kiss me. Give me some. No, 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 why would you do all this to bring us here? I'm bringing y'all here to waste our motherfucking time with my sister. I'm sorry, bro. Do you want to marry her? You know, because she's single now. I don't know what to say, Steve. What do you want, Steve? When he was at your house and he. He said, he said he makes, he makes you, you everyone, everyone happy, happy and, and stuff. stuff. That, that wasn't, wasn't good enough for you. Now he's saying no, not good enough for you. What do you want Bartise to do? Do you want Bartise all to yourself? Is this some secret gay love story that you're in? Steve, please, can you please explain what you need from Bartise? My only sister. What the fuck does it matter if she's your only sister or you have 10 sisters? He still said no. She's my only sister, and you don't want to marry her. If I had two sisters, would you marry one of them? Maybe we can make some more sisters. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can work out a deal. I don't, Jesus is still single, I think. Two for one. It's not for you to understand. understand. I just want an explanation from this man. A it's, small You don't need one. I don't, I, I don't, don't need one. I, I just need a little, I just need a little explanation. Not like a big one. I need like a, two, a little paragraph on like why you don't want to marry my sister. Because she's like the best. I don't, I like anybody would want to marry her. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what the? I know I do not need one. No, let me talk to you. I know I do not need one. We will talk. You're fucking this whole thing up, bro. You're fucking we will talk. Okay. I'm trying to give her a reason why. I'm fucking this up. You're fucking, I didn't say no to her. You said no to her. If it was me up there, it wouldn't even be a question. You lucky I'm, I'm her brother. You lu I'm, I'm so unlucky that I'm her brother. Okay? Man, you a lucky dog. Yeah. But yeah, you the one that wanna bring us out here, just say I don't. And I'm the one fucking this That bro. this is between yeah, me yeah, and Bartise? We're not gonna oh, force on, him to on, say yes. I mean, it seemed like you really were trying to force him to say yes, so. I don't know. I don't know. Steve was really hoping for a yes. And even with a yes, he would call him like, Steve, there's no winning with Steve. He was like, ever since he tied that weird Google Chrome tie, I just knew that he was never going to, there's no pleasing Steve. But you stupid. She got way too much going on for herself to be hooked up with a guy like this, with a little boy like this. Damn, he's, he's really getting, talking a lot blacker than when he started, isn't he? Little boy like this. Little man like this. Steve's literally like one, two foot shorter than Bartiz. It's, it's, I don't know why he'd even choose those words, but anyway, little boy. Come on now, that ain't no man. That's a punk right there. He's really, he's really talking like a GTA 5 character now. Come on, boy. That ain't no man. That's a boy. It's that Google Chrome tie. I'm telling you, it's that pink lavender tie that was tied by the gods of not seeing things. Really. Don't blindside me. Don't send me a fucking shot that says, we got this, whatever you said. So Nancy and Bartiste then go to the staircase in which Nancy actually honestly and truly says what needs to be said. You know, she sh you should have said it straight. You should have told me way before. And she's like a million percent right. I don't think that if, you know, you really respect and love someone that you'd go up there and make them wait last minute. I don't think you could hear the words I do from someone and then say I do not and expect them not to react. I didn't know what I was going to say coming into today. I, I made the decision that made the most sense. If I don't know, that's my answer. Fuck, I did fucking fall in love hard. My favorite part about Nancy, just by the way, is that even when she's like, you know, got a point or something to say, she will listen to this man talk. Regardless of how stupid the stuff he says is, she will literally listen and take in those words and then speak. She even, you know, she has those conversations. She She's very open about that. And I think that's probably her best quality. And it'll serve her tremendously in her relationships in the future. For me to try to understand why you said no doesn't make sense, because it means nothing. So that's crazy, honestly, to hear you say that because, like, you just told me yes at the altar. So how can you flip the script so fast? Like Bartise then gets a little uh, hurt that Nancy pretty much cuts him off and says, after you said no, everything ended, and I don't really have any feelings past this point. Again, Nancy is just being a boss at this point because she's like, you've said and made your decision. From there on, I really don't want anything else to do with it. Not only is it her decision, but probably the healthy decision, too. For me, it's not, oh, maybe it'll work later. It's like, no, I chose you. 
you. You didn't choose me. And am I sad? Yeah. But I said yes and you said no. Like So Nancy basically says there's really no future because you've pretty much made your decision right now and there's no such thing as the future because if you can make that decision now, I don't really want to bold or have any hope that in the future you're going to change your mind. I don't know if Bartice is really ready to handle this type of marriage or this type of situation. I think Nancy needs, needs a guy, a guy like, like, like Andrew, Andrew, my boy. My boy. Oh, oh, I miss him in his eye drops. drops. I'm not going to backtrack. For what? I want to rip this off because it means nothing to me now. Damn, she said she wants to rip it off. She was talking about the stupid shitty chain thing. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I say that? What happens? Now you have to go to a welder and say, you know, ah, Bartiz broke my heart. Break the chain. This is so stupid. Why? You might as well have got handcuffs with fluffs on it and then been like, well, to end this, you have to have sex with me one more time. Like, you have to make it make it make sense. At the end of the season, they have a little self-camera reflection time and Bartiz says that even though he's very sorry that he got everyone here just to say this decision, he thinks that the end of the day after everything it is the right decision and although i you know gave nancy props this whole episode and basically the whole series i do think understanding and realizing that you may not be ready for something as late as it is is still probably the better decision than saying yes and being unhappy and then getting a divorce later in life so it's probably right for both of them in their own ways that they made this decision i know that was the right decision for me nancy fell in love with bartice and i fell in love with nancy and was it enough for us to go forever? No, it wasn't. But there's nothing I would change. I don't think I did anything wrong. So Barty said he didn't feel like he did anything wrong. And in saying no, I think you're not wrong. I think that you should have that decision. It's ultimately yours no matter how into the person you are. But I think the way that you do it and the way that you handle things is very wrong. I think that the way that he didn't give Nancy that clarity and that communication beforehand really shows like maybe he didn't respect her or didn't really respect the relationship enough to give it its full attempt. Now we hit to Nancy. It's broken. He blindsided me. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to believe that if I took a risk to love him for who he was, that he would do the same. And that's how the series ends. Nancy says that she's heartbroken and he wished that he would do the same. They then show her walking off and the next time we see those two is at the reunion, which is a video that I will do in the future. But that is Nancy and Bartice's relationship. It was a long long episode a very long expansion of like what a relationship should be and i think we could just take a few minutes to summarize what happened now bartice met nancy in the pods he fell in love with a character nancy fell in love with his character and charisma they seemed to have no problems at the start but it was very evident that once meeting the other people bartice did have some sort of physical attachment to other people he couldn't get past the fact that he thought raven another person that he found attractive in the pods was attractive physically and that sort of um, stifled the relationship with Nancy which he had an emotional connection with. He went on the series saying that there is no such thing as a physical connection and that he can look past it despite his age. He was completely wrong from the start. He was very much into Raven and her fat butt and uh, um, he seemed to really like her even though she ended up with SK and wanted to respect that. Because of that I think Bartice then grew less attracted to Nancy as time went on and also also, the fact that Nancy had these uh, conversations with his family that he wasn't agreeing with. He also seemed to have some instances of jealousy whenever Andrew returned into the picture and whenever he found out that Nancy's ex was still in business with her. Even though Nancy really never gave him any reason to be jealous in any way shape or form. Bartiz seemed to um, display these these exhibitions of uh, a boy or man sorry who who's been spoiled for choice. He even said it in his past relationships. He's been someone who could get goals very easily and for him it was hard to commit to someone and to also overlook the physical aspects because that's what he prioritized not only on himself but other people and love is blind for him was an experiment to see if he could get past that and he clearly couldn't he's not ready for a marriage and he wasn't ready to commit to that beyond that point i don't think he's necessarily a bad person i think he's just got some growing to do before he can like fully commit to someone and i think it'll take more than eight weeks to really realize that he is still growing after all with nancy i think she wanted an emotional connection and honestly Honestly, she was pretty solid throughout this whole series. She seemed to listen, she seemed to give him what he needed, and she knew her flaws and worked on them. She also knew who she was as a person, and the fact that Bartiz couldn't accept how she looked was really, really heartbreaking. I think that Nancy should just probably stay the course and do her things. I think she's quirky and really nice. The only knock I have on Nancy is her goddamn brother Steve, who can't seem to get her out of her head. 
I don't know what's wrong with Steve and the mom who's a fiery, fiery person, but if they can just chill and let Nancy do her thing, I think she'll be fine. It's unfortunate that these two didn't work out, but it's, like I said, probably the right decision at the end of the day. <clears throat> An interesting character study on how a guy can let his past and current situation impact his future. It takes a lot to change and uh, usually takes a person who really, really is very good for you to see that and want to change in yourself. And for Batiste, this really wasn't enough. That's really all I have to say about the series. It was a long episode, I know. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, I hope that you enjoy the next one as well. And um, if Love is Blind ever has a season four, I'll probably be watching with it while drinking because I hate the show. I love hate it, but I really, really more hate it. I really want to see a couple that is so honest that at the start when they get engaged, the guy and the girl see each other and they're like, Ugh! and then they just leave. So until that happens, I feel like I'm going to boycott the show. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next one. And um, if you're ever watching Love is Blind and taking relationship advice from these fools, you might as well just end it now. Thank you. Goodbye. She ain't even got a ass. She did a dash and bit a last. You know a dash and she know. Baby,